Brae is located on the west coast of the mainland of Orkney in Scotland. In the winter of 1850, a wild storm struck Stara Brae. The top layer of ground was stripped, uncovering an untouched village. In 1868, excavation ceased for some unknown reason and during this time it is believed that people raided the site looking for treasure. The entire site was excavated in 1927 by V. Gordon Child after another storm damaged pre-existing structures. Scara Bray was a tightly knit community whose houses were all joined together by passageways. By the looks of the houses, it appears that no structure was bigger or grander than another. Veer Gordon Child concluded that they were an equal society. However, this may reflect his own communist views. Perhaps they were built this way because it was simply a tried and true method. No clothing was ever found at Scara Bray. But what was found were tools made out of bone that historians believe were used for skinning animals. Bones belonging to sheep, cattle, deer and many more animals were found at the site. So the skins of these animals would have been made into warm clothing for the extreme weather conditions on the Scottish coast. The jewellery that was discovered at the site shows us that the people of Scarra Bray were extremely clever creating jewellery from bone, ivory, stone and teeth from animals with the mere tools that they had made with their bare hands. Some sources suggest that it was a means of social class and that the jewellery and other handcrafted objects were put on display on the stone dresser which could be seen straight away upon entry into their houses. Spectacular dresser on which our house proud Neolithic villagers would have set out all the most precious stuff fine bone and ivory necklaces, beautifully wrought and carved stone objects, everything designed to make a grand interior statement. The stone carved balls that we just saw may have been used for house decorations as the BBC documentary explained, but archaeologist Dr Colin Richards believed that they may have had a religious purpose and could have been used in spiritual rituals. However, it is difficult to determine the religious beliefs of the dwellers. He explains, We're trying to make them like us, but in reality, these people were totally different. Mays Howe, a tomb nearby, and Skara Bray have extremely similar architecture. If the inhabitants of this site did build the tomb, which is the belief of many historians, it shows us that for them to put in that much effort, the burial of the dead was quite important. We know from evidence found at the site that the people of Skara Bray were self-sufficient hunters, fishermen and farmers. Crops of barley and wheat were grown in the surrounding fields, which would have been utilised to be eaten. Bones found in the midden on the site show that the cattle and sheep made up a significant part of the diet. Remains of fish bones and limpet shells also indicate that a reasonable amount of seafood was consumed, as well as seabird eggs, pigs and other shellfish. But the question on everyone's lips is what happened to the people of Skara Bray? There are many theories that have been proposed by historians on why Skara Bray was abandoned. The excavator himself, Veer Gordon Child's proposition, was that the people had to desert the village quickly because of an apocalyptic disaster. His reasoning for this was that scraps of bone and shells were lying scattered all over the floor, but he stated that the definite evidence was a trail of beads picked up in the doorway, which had fallen from a necklace broken as its wearer squeezed hurriedly through the narrow gap. Historian Carolyn Wickham Jones supports the idea that sand suddenly filled over the village. The village was eventually abandoned because the sand came in from the sea and filled in the houses and covered them over, preserving them. But this man, archaeologist David Clark, argues that this was the reason for Skyra Bray's abandonment. He has his own opinion. Well, I think what happened was that the the ideas, the 
society which said villages were an okay way to live was breaking up. People were going back to individual farmsteads and you know, dispersed in the landscape. And I think that essentially the younger people moved out and the older people just slowly died off and the place slowly contracted. No house is there more than two feet of sand. Now if you're going to get ten, two feet of sand, you've got houses like this with all this investment, you're going to turn around and say, hey, yeah. I've got two feet of sand in my house, you know, I'm not, I'm giving that up, I'm going away and building something. It's rubbish, it's completely yeah. utter rubbish.